Hey woodcutters, today we're milling out pine logs in a three quarter inch. Um, it's going to be eight inch siding for a barn. It's a forester in the area, so he's bringing the logs in. Going to work with the students on good milling techniques, learn some stuff about milling. We're going to unload the logs with the Vermeer CTX 50 and mill them up on the LT15 Woodmiser mill. So a lot going on in this video. All right, have a retired forester friend of the high school here, bringing by five ponderous pine logs for us to mill in a one by for the side of a barn. Still has the chokers on here, on a couple of them. The bell housing. Let me pull these off with the mini skid steer and, and we'll start milling them. Well, the students will start milling them tomorrow. Okay, here I am on the Vermeer CTX 50 with the grapple pulling the logs off of the Forester's trailer. He, lo he um, loaded the logs with his Kubota up on his property and drove them down. The CTX is really, is a fantastic tool, works really well. Um, pretty easy to move these size logs around. I am kind of tapped out on height right there. And on that big log in the center, I'm tapped out on weight capacity. But it's a beautiful tool. I'm very fortunate to have a lot of really nice corporate sponsors at the high school wood shop. A lot of people um, really like to see kids doing stuff. So I've had a lot of support over the years. This um, tool was actually bought through a grant that I received. So that's kind of cool. All right, here I am pulling that big log out. I can't actually get close enough with the ramps down and I can't move the ramps in to drive on them because they're fixed. So I'm just trying to skid the ramp out as much as I can, keeping the grapple in between the ramps. So it's a little tricky, kind of moving forward and pulling it back. You can see I'm completely tapped there. I'm really kind of moving his trailer around quite a bit. Well, I guess here, bumping the ramps a little bit. I'm actually gonna pop the trailer off by accident as I pull this log out. So watch the trailer right here. You can see as I'm pulling this log out, I just popped the trailer off the hitch. I don't think it was clicked. So um, really the only way to jack it up is for me to use the Vermeer to push the log down and then try and push the trailer forward. And then Bob's going to back up to the trailer. He hooks it up and we're hooked back up and then locked back in place. Now I'm pulling the log off with the grapple and you could see the trailer's not rolling around. A little nervous here. I don't want to drop that log off the trailer and have it flip the Vermeer. So it drops down here pretty good. No trouble. Swing the grapple, move the logs around and ready to go. Top of a pine. Pretty big wire there. You think, I think, is it a staple? I think so. There we go. Moving there. There it is. Pretty big screw. Ended up hitting it with the chainsaw. Inevitably digging it out. So here's our log. 22 inch diameter. 70% is the rule we usually go with. 70% will give us our cant. So 70% of 22 is maybe 16. So if we take four off the top, four off the bottom, that'll give us 16. And we want eight inch boards plus or minus. So that'll work pretty well. So we're gonna mill it to that square block cant, 16 by 16. That's an awfully big 
manual rings are sticking up this way instead of curving around. So this is a much stronger wood if you just made a board out of it, cut that again, you'd have all vertical grain here. And it uh, doesn't cut or twist or anything, it's much more stable. Okay. Makes much better flooring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like a small, a small three. Probably television cable. I mean, maybe not that cool. You could see the the coaxial cable, all the copper wire there. That must be a staple. You could see in the cutting how smooth it cuts here, and then once it hit that nail and steel, how rough the cut is and how it climbs. You could actually see it probably comes up a quarter inch in height. That right there at the end of the log. That might actually be the limb they cut off on the installation of the antenna about 18 years ago. You want me to pull it out like this? Yeah, it, you're kind of breaking grain. Give it a, give it some wax. Like on the top? Yeah, just just. Oh, with this one? No, just beat it. Just on the top. Right there. Yeah. Ooh, don't hit me. You're gonna have to take smaller pieces closer to you. There you go. I think it goes all the way through the tree. You see it Seems right there. Like it. Yeah. Yeah, looks like it just broke off. Oh, there's a nail. So two cans. You want to go with a level or a square? There we go, making lumber. It's, it's a little fun to turn that off. And see, this was, when the tree was cut, this was a green knot, a green limb coming out. And that's called a live knot, and that'll probably stay there. But over here, this one was dead already, probably, and that knot will probably fall out. It's just the difference of it. And here's a all these that's a, a green knot so that'd probably be fine but well is that right is that what determines whether the knot pops out or not yeah if it was green when the tree was cut um, it'll it's still attached to the the other the wood the, in the tree whereas that would that well i'm sure that was a dead knot too and it would probably fall out because it would the tree grew around it after it was dead so this is would be a vertical grain. The grain is coming up. As you get to the center of the tree, it's just the opposite. So you get these big swirly things, which is in one way kind of prettier, but it's it's not nearly as strong. And that makes good flooring because you've got a lot of hard wood sticking straight up and it, it doesn't wear out near as fast. So what kind of saw pattern would you call this right here? Just still a um, slab yeah, mill? Right. And then this is cathedral. Yeah. So now we have a cant cut on all three sides. Um, and we're cutting out three quarter inch slabs. They're a little under 16, probably 15, but that'll work. And then here I've turned it up to 10 by time lapse. And you can see the students are really getting it done right here. Nice to see. Um, logs coming out pretty nice. That rule is 70%, it's a good rule to know. All right, so if your diameter is 22 inches, I think I might have said these numbers incorrectly before. 70% of that is say 15, 16. So 16 from 22 is six. So we only want to come down about three inches on each side. So we're hoping to get, you know, seven, eight inch wide lap siding for the barn out of this. So if we could get 15, 16s, um, then he could rip them on the table saw rather than do them here. 
probably better rip them on the table saw after they're dry anyway to prevent any sort of cupping. So um, doing a great job. Really enjoy the forester, retired forester coming in, working with the kids, checking that we're still level there. Things are going really well. Um, if you're new to this channel, think about subscribing. It's all things wood, um, from tree work to woodwork. So I do tree work on the weekends and bring the logs in and we mill it at school and then build projects out of it. So I appreciate you watching. Love to hear your comments below. If you mill lumber as well, maybe you have some pointers you could see. And hit like if you like the video. Thank you.